Okay. Hi, everybody. Dr. Howe here. Uh, I want to take a little bit of time to go over with you some revision strategies uh, as you're working on project three. Um, we went over this a little bit in class last period as we were thinking through issues of organization. Uh, we began to think about ways to um, revise your uh, paragraphs, your body paragraphs, where you're talking about your sources, uh, especially to focus on topic sentences and um, ways to bring your rhetorical analysis up into excuse me, the, um, the main summary paragraph so that you don't have to worry about crafting another topic sentence for that uh, paragraph. We talked a little bit about conclusion sentences um, and, and so on. So what I wanna do is show you what I might do if um, I were working on a particular project myself. So what I've done is I've taken one student's uh, annotation here. We've got the summary paragraph and we've got the rhetorical analysis paragraph here. Now I've read through um, all of the student sources and um, I might come up with a uh, topic statement, a thesis statement, okay? Um, much like this, okay? And I'm gonna put this in my intro. So I would have an intro that talks about the, why the topic I might have an, an intro. Uh, and in that introduction, I might do some things like um, talk about uh, what the topic is. Right? Why is it of interest to me? Okay, these are some ways that I might craft my introduction. And then I wanna conclude my introduction with my thesis statement. And that thesis statement is gonna be something that connects all of the research I've done. It doesn't necessarily need to make an argument, okay? That's for project four, but it does need to offer a sense, a more specific sense of your topic, a more narrowed statement of your topic and how all of your research kind of hangs together, okay? So in this case, I might have a topic statement or sorry, a thesis statement that looks something like this. Current vaccine development is complex and taking place on numerous uh, fronts, though there is as yet no clear solution to the problem of the pandemic. Okay. Um, as yet no clear solution. Okay, so here's my thesis statement. It's gonna be kind of guiding my um, my source analysis essay. Okay. Current vaccine development is complex, taking place on numerous fronts. So ostensibly my sources are gonna talk about some of the complexity of, vac of vaccine development and how they're taking place on a number of different fronts. What different kinds of things are people doing to talk about, uh, sorry, to, to, to try to develop a vaccine or treatment. Um, and this point that probably all of them are also making, there is as yet no clear solution to the problem, okay? So, now that I have my topic sentence, uh, sorry, my thesis sentence, I keep, I keep messing that up. Sorry, you guys. <laughs> now that I have my thesis statement, that's just a statement. It's not an argumentative claim or anything like that. It's just a statement that is linking together all of my materials, okay? Um, what I'm gonna need to do is uh, read through my paragraph in a little bit more detail. Okay, so this is the first source that I'm going to be talking about. In this website article published October 2020, the author, Sean Radcliffe, goes into detail and explains the progress and lack thereof in finding a cure for COVID-19. COVID-19 cases worldwide keep accumulating rapidly and show no sign of stopping. Scientists around the world are trying to find a cure or treatment that will help put this virus to rest. The scientists are trying to develop new drugs as well as look into ones that are already used to treat other conditions. Uh, most of the drugs that have been approved by the FDA at this point are still being tested and are in the clinical trial stages. Various drugs such as remdesivir, Arbidol, EIDD-2801, Favipiravir, Kalitra, and others are shown to be promising, but no one knows quite yet which ones will be completely effective. Okay, so this is a very broad article um, that is sort of informing a pretty general audience about some of the things that are being done, what some of the key drugs are that are out there that are being worked with and tested. And ultimately, um, no one knows yet which ones will work or what will be effective. 
Okay. So it's, it's very broad. It doesn't talk about specific clinical trials. It doesn't really talk about, um, uh, it doesn't go into detail on, on um, the, the kinds of experiments that are being done. It uh, doesn't have a lot of information here at any rate in this summary about um, you know, the, the details of what the coronavirus is and how it works, right? It doesn't have any of that in it. This is a very broad sort of sweeping um, uh, assessment of the research that's been done, that's being done now, okay? So what I wanna do is have a topic sentence. I'm gonna to need a topic sentence. So I'm just gonna put this in here to sort of bracket it for the moment, okay? Um, in this article website, in this website article, okay, one of the things I notice is that I don't have a title here. So I'm gonna probably wanna put the title in this website article. I might just say in where we're at with vaccines and treatments for COVID-19, comma, okay, published in October, okay. All right, good, already got that in there. Um, uh, okay, so um, I probably also wanna put the source up here a little bit earlier, just because that's pretty common practice, okay. In where we're at with vaccines and treatments for COVID-19, okay, um, an article for the online health information site, healthline, comma. Okay, now where did I get all this stuff from? Oh, where did I get all this stuff from? Okay, well, I got it from down here, okay? Um, what is Healthline, okay? Uh, it is a, a site that, right, Aims aimed at the general audience. And um, what is this article? It is an article from a source that uh, is, is online health information site. Okay. So I've got that in there. Um, I'm not going to put the date in here, actually. And the reason I'm not going to put the date in here is because all of my sources are from the same time period. So it doesn't really make much of a difference in terms of my source analysis. And it's something that uh, it's something that I would draw attention to if it were necessary, right? But it's not really necessary here, surprisingly, okay? You always wanna make that choice, okay? All right, in where we're at with vaccines and treatments for COVID-19, an article with the online health information site, uh, Healthline. Okay, now what do we do? Um, Author Sean Radcliffe, I wanna make sure we get his name right. According to the work cited, he's got an E on the end. The author Sean Radcliffe goes into detail and explains the progress. Okay, goes into detail is not very detailed. So I'm gonna cut that. Explains the progress and lack thereof in finding a cure for COVID-19. Okay, done, great, right? Um, COVID-19 cases worldwide, do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do, keep accumulating rapidly, scientists are trying to, okay. This to me reads very much like an introduction. Okay, so I'm actually going to take this. It does, it's not specific to this particular article. I mean, it's, it's pretty common knowledge and all of the articles will touch on it. So I'm actually going to take this and I'm going to put it up here in my introduction. Okay, I'm probably going to put it up here. COVID-19 cases worldwide. Okay, what is the topic, right? <laughs> now I've got sense of what my topic is so I can get rid of that, okay? I still want to add why is it important to me, okay? But uh, but that'll be something that I'll add in just a sec, okay? Or later. All right, so let's go back to this paragraph. So now it's unfortunately shorter. Well, that's no good, right? <laughs> Sean Radcliffe explains the progress and lack of a funny cure for COVID-19. Okay, um, I probably wouldn't want to just start by on um, saying these scientists, because we don't know really what the, who the scientists are yet, okay? Which scientists? Remember, we cut that. We moved it up here, scientists around the world, right? So that means this doesn't quite work here, okay? So what we probably want to do is um, explain a little bit of something more in this sentence, okay? So I'm actually going to go down, dip down here into my um, rhetorical analysis section. I'm going to see if there's anything interesting here that I can use as an introductory clause, okay? And one of the things that I note is uh, that the author uh, of this um, essay, beginning of, of this essay, has a great example about how the um, more everyday language is used, okay? That it's a for more general common words and explanations that make sense to the article, to the audience, okay? 
So this is an important point, okay? Uh, so I might want to actually move this up here a little bit and use it as a nice introduction, okay? So I might say something like putting uh, research on current vaccine developments into more everyday language for example, and then I might actually give give a particular example, right? <laughs> right? Um, from the essay, okay? Uh, so I've got this introduction here, and now um, I'm, I'm, I can see how these scientists might be a little bit more relevant because we've got this discussion of vaccine developments, okay? Um, but who's putting these developments into more everyday language? For example, what? Well, Radcliffe, okay? So I'm gonna say Radcliffe, explains to his audience how these, how scientists are trying to develop a new drug as well as look into ones, so we could say drugs, right? That are already used to treat other conditions and may be helpful for COVID-19, okay? All right, so now we've clarified just a little bit. We've gotten a bit of our um, uh, rhetorical analysis up here already, which is nice. All right, so let's move on. Um, I probably will wanna cite this paragraph, okay? Cite that paragraph, because that's pretty con concrete information, okay? All right, uh, most of the drugs that are uh, still, most of the drugs that have been approved by the FDA at this point um, are still being, we don't need any comment there, are still being tested and are in the clinical trial stages. Um, might wanna flesh that out, um, especially if the article talks about that process, okay? But at the very least, I wanna cite, okay? Um, Let's see. Okay, various drugs such as remdesivir, this is capital, right? All of these are name brands, right? Except for possibly this one. I'm not exactly sure, but I think they are. Um, and others are showing promise, but no one yet knows which ones will be completely effective. Now, does the essay talk about why we don't know? Right. Um, right. That might be something I, I would like to add. Okay. Um, maybe to flesh out the content. Okay. So now um, I've got some of the things that I talked about down here, um, up here. So we've got the bit about Healthline. Okay. We can we can sort of um, delete that. We've talked about the article being aimed at general public using. Okay, it will make sense of the, to the audience. Okay, okay, I can cut that. I might wanna repeat it a little bit if it's important. Uh, author of this article, Sean Radcliffe, we've already talked about that. Science writer from Canada. Okay, we wanna put this in here. Um, uh, Sean Radcliffe, a science, a Canadian science writer. Okay, Sean Radcliffe, a Canadian uh, science writer. We could we could tweak this too by saying, saying things like, um, let's see, in Healthline, we can say uh, Canadian science writer, Sean Radcliffe, because obviously he's the author, right? And that can simplify some things a little bit. Okay, good. So now we've got this bit done. Okay, we've got this stuff about facts and statistics and research. Okay, well, we've already kind of said this up here, right? putting research on current vaccine developments, okay? Using facts and statistics. Okay, this is probably something that I'd wanna say a little bit more about, okay? Because it's most likely gonna have something to do with content, all right? So uses facts and statistics. Is there a way to add some of that information up here? Not just the fact that he uses facts and statistics, right? But what kind of information does he actually say, right? Radcliffe explains to his audience how scientists are trying to develop new drugs, and are, okay. Um, I might add a bit here about using facts and statistics from where, right? Who, right? What, right? 
thread uh, through, we could say through his facts and statistics, da, 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 right? We learn that what? Right. So I might add just a little bit more content up there about the nature of this research that's that's happened, okay? So that is something that I wanna add a little bit more up there. Research on vaccines, the pocket, okay, good. So we've, we've talked about that. Um, the goals, okay, so here's, here's his purpose, okay? So we probably wanna add a paragraph, a, sent a conclusion sentence. Maybe that can be in our conclusion sentence. Website based in the US, okay, we don't have that yet. Um, we don't have the idea that this is a website based in the US. Um, and this health related content and tools. Okay, so now let's think about our conclusion sentence. All right, health line comma, a popular US based website for health related content and tools geared towards a general audience comma provides reliable but accessible so that way I'm going back to this idea of the um, general audience okay reliable but accessible information okay on these strides scientists uh, strides that scientists are making on the path to finding a cure for COVID-19. Okay, geared toward general audience, US based. Okay, so now we've got all of this stuff done. Okay, um, and I have a paragraph that's, that's a little bit shorter than both of mine together, but it's been fleshed out and connected in a little bit more detail. Now I've already, I still do have to add this extra sentence here, right? where, what do we learn, what are these facts and statistics that he's actually talking about, right? And what does he say with them, okay? And then I might also want to um, add an explanation here, okay? So when you're reading through your summary, you may want to ask yourself, is there something here that I need to explain a little bit more, okay? Is there something about this sentence that makes it a little too general and the audience may not exactly know what I'm talking about? That's usually a good sign that you need a little bit more content, okay? All right, so um, I've got my topic sentence. I've got my conclusion sentence, okay? I will have my work cited down here. And remember, um, I'm gonna have three more, sor two more sources for a total of three that I'm gonna, that I'm gonna talk about, okay? Um, so work cited, put that in the middle. All right, so now I've got the beginnings of a, of a top of an introduction paragraph. I'm probably gonna have to have a paragraph like the assignment says, um, discussing your research process, right? Be concrete about terms used, revisions to your search terms. I can't write and talk, I can't type and talk at the same time. So I'm sorry, this is, <laughs> uh, be concrete about the terms that you've used, the revisions to the search terms that you may have, have done, um, how you identified and collected results, whether you had or used any features of the database or Google search to help you narrow, right, and so on, okay? So now you have a paragraph of introduction, a paragraph discussing your research process, and then we've, we're gonna start with this essay that's very general, okay? And we're gonna learn a little bit about that context, okay? And then I would move on to the more complicated, right, sources that I found that talk about slightly different things or more nuanced things or particular studies and, and so on. Okay. And I want to keep in mind where there might be places of overlap. So if I remember correctly, this was one idea that was an overlap, okay, I saw in another summary. And um, this idea about clinical trial stages, other trials, like other experiments and studies that are being done, was also um, something that I saw in one of the other uh, summaries, okay, if I remember correctly. So that 
that suggests to me that there might be some possible transitions that I can mine here, okay? Um, this conclusion sentence, it, like the article itself, is pretty general, okay? Um, but I have an uh, opening sentence, a topic sentence, okay? and I've got a conclusion sentence that, that, uh, that moves me on in a pretty much any direction I might want to go. Um, and I've also complicated, not really complicated in a bad way, but I've, but I've made, I've varied my sentence structure to make it more interesting to read by adding some um, clauses and phrases and explanations that I've pulled up from my rhetorical analysis section. So this is what it reads like altogether. And I'm gonna skip some of the details that I suggest adding because I want you to hear how it flows together. In Where We're At With Vaccines and Treatments for COVID-19, an article for the online health information site Healthline, Canadian science writer Sean Radcliffe explains the progress and lack thereof in finding a cure for COVID-19. Putting research on current vaccine developments into more everyday language, Radcliffe explains to his audience how scientists are trying to develop a new drug as well as look into drugs that are already used to treat other conditions and may be helpful for COVID-19. Most of the drugs that have been approved by the FDA at this point are still being tested and are in the clinical trial stages. Various drugs such as remdesivir, Arbidol, EIDD2801, Favipiravir, Favipiravir, Calitra, and others are showing promise, but no one knows quite yet which ones will be completely effective. Healthline, a popular US-based website for health-related content and tools geared toward a general audience, provides reliable but accessible information on the strides scientists are making on the path to find a cure for COVID-19. Okay. Now this is a quite a robust paragraph. Now, just to show you what's going on here, if we put this into, uh, if we double space this, okay, and we wanna make sure this is in point 12, okay. Notice that I've got it just, I've got one whole page here, okay. And that's without fleshing out the introduction or the paragraph discussing the research process or the other two sources plus your conclusion. So I'm well on my way to having a four pair, a four page paper, okay. Um, so I wanted to share, share that with you so that you can see what techniques and strategies um, I might use and I might encourage you to use as you move forward in this process. I hope this has been helpful. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions and I look forward to seeing your drafts.